Lord Nasher Alagandar, Defender of Neverwinter, and Reverend Judge Olaf Uska, Lord Justiceer of Tyr. Bring in the accused. Reverend Judge, let the trial commence. We are gathered here to determine the truth of the crime committed in the small village of Ember. Its people slaughtered to the last man, woman, and child. Under Tyr's guidance shall the truth of this matter be revealed and justice delivered. Is the accuser here? I speak for those the accused slaughtered at Ember, and I am here to see that justice is carried out this day. I think you speak out of turn, murderer. You are on trial today, not I. Enough! Both of you will be silent. Oh, this will be fun. Well said, by the way. Nothing like a simple turn of phrase to make Torio look the fool. And is the accused here? And his defender? We are present and eager to bring the truth of this matter into Tyr's sight, Reverend Judge. Very well. We now list the items presented by the accused in their defense, and they will be shown to the people of the court, Lord Nasher, and held aloft for the eye of Tyr to see. First off, it may take a while for them to get through all the evidence, bless it, and the rest of the ritual nonsense. So if you have anything you want to ask, now's the best time. Torio is an arrogant creature, but she is not a Luscan ambassador for nothing. This court is her theater, her arena, and she has had years of experience in treachery and twisting words. While evidence helps a case, she knows it is often the drama, the belief of everyone here as to who is guilty and who is not that will ultimately win the day. Do not forget that the rabble are here today to see someone hang. Unless you can convince them that you have been wronged, and grievously so, it is an uphill battle you fight. It is somewhat unorthodox, but playing upon the animosity between Luskin and Neverwinter may help you. But that will only go so far, and may even help Torio in convincing the court that your actions may have been an attempt to start another war which no one in Neverwinter wants. I cannot give you a clear strategy, but remember that trading diplomatic words with Torio will be difficult. Do not Resort to such a duel unless you feel you can absolutely win. And do not threaten her or try to bluff her unless you are equally certain. If you fail, you are bound for the gallows for certain. Very well. And that is the evidence before us. Perfect. Look at their faces. Torio's got quite a task ahead of her. That little harpy. Let's see her fly out of this little trap. The accuser, Ambassador Torio Claven of Luskin, may now call witnesses to the stand. These pieces of evidence, if that is what they truly are, can easily be explained away. It may seem extensive, but our witnesses will tell a different story. Speculate? The truth is what we are here to determine. Everything is in question. Of course not, and I aim to prove it. I suggest you hold your tongue. I think you will want to hear what my witnesses have to say. My, she has a temper. Well done, I am impressed. I understand that you wish to stall the witnesses about to speak. But there is really nothing more your wordplay can do to prevent it. Another witness, yes, and a most important one, Reverend Judge. Unknown to many, the people of Ember were not slaughtered to the last woman and child. I call on Elaine, the last living resident of Ember, to speak on what she saw that fateful day. Elaine. 
Thank you for coming here. I know how difficult it must be, but you realize that you are the only voice of Ember that survived that terrible tragedy. Now, please tell the court what you saw. I... I saw the accused. They're at Ember. He killed them all. Elaine, no. Look, when you get the chance, ask her if I would ever travel with someone who would do that, and where we were when it occurred. This isn't good. We need to change the course of the river streaming from her eyes, or we're all going to hang. It will be allowed. All sides of an issue must be heard. For now, Ambassador, continue. Go on, Elaine. Tell us what you saw. All those people. And they had no weapons. They had no way of fighting back. But... But... But the accused slaughtered them all, did he not? Yes. I saw it all. I took refuge in Port Last. There was nowhere left for me to go. You are safe now, Elaine. And the accused cannot harm you here. What more proof is needed? We have a witness, a witness that saw the accused perform the deed. Perhaps we should move on to the sentence now? The accused's guilt is plain. Of course. Please, the trap has already closed. There is no squirming out of it now. Yes, I did. What? Forget this. Clearly the witness is too distraught to give her testimony properly. So let's choose someone who's not affected by Ember at all. Someone the accused knows all too well. I call forth Chandra Jero. What? I'd rather spit on her. Besides, there's nothing to testify about. Come now, Chandra. Don't be afraid. We are in a court of law. You may speak freely here. About what? About these false accusations? No. I am interested only in your interactions with the accused. You travel with him. Do you not? I do. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever observed the accused causing, or near, any acts that compare to the destruction at Ember? I really don't think that- Answer the question. No. Not even your home? Well, yes. But that was different. There were- And wasn't your home attacked twice, and is now burned to the ground? Well, yes, but that was after- Next time when I ask you a question, I want you to answer it, Chandra, without objecting or giving me exceptions. You are safe here, and you need not fear the accused anymore. Because you see, what I am most concerned about, Chandra, is what you think. What you really think of the accused. We know something of his activities in Neverwinter already, as well as the lands around. So think carefully before you answer. Hope you've been treating her well. She's about to come clean. Is he someone who might do such a thing? No, he is a noble man, someone of great character. To hear him slandered like this makes me angry at the injustice of it. Angry enough to attack? To kill those who stand against the accused? I see. By the gods, if you are accusing me of what happened at Ember... I make no such accusations. But trouble does follow the accused, oddly enough. Perhaps you are blinded. One can often be in shock after the destruction of one's home. Thank you for all your help, Chandra. I think this matter will soon be brought to a close. I hope you get what you deserve, Ambassador. My dear, all I want is justice. In a moment. But there's one more witness who's critical to this case. Why, I call the accused as a witness, of course. My question is a simple one. Why did you kill the people of Ember? So you have not been to Ember, not seen the dead at your feet? We 
We do not need a history lesson here. Ember is all that concerns us. We will allow it. Very well. There is no need to dwell on past. Reverend Judge, we are not here for a recounting of old wars. Indeed. And what dusty tome or witness shall you grasp for next in your defense? Please, amuse me with a name. Enough of this diversion. You have distracted us from the matter at hand, but not for long. Let us see if your witnesses prove as capable. No more questions, Reverend Judge. Very well, Ambassador. The accused may now present their witnesses. May I? I have a brief opening speech with some cutting barbs prepared, but if you'd rather be found innocent as quickly as possible... Thank you, Reverend Judge, Lord Nasher, and fine people of Neverwinter. These allegations are a farce, my lord. I mean to show you the innocence of this man, a squire of Neverwinter, and the falsehood of the accusations against him. The evidence of the ambassador from Luskin is a transparent, ill-conceived ploy to destroy the life of one of Neverwinter's loyal servants. The accused has only been a squire for a short time, conveniently promoted after the massacre of the people of Ember. Perhaps as a reward? Ambassador, you've had your say. Now it is time for the accused to speak. And as for you, Sand, I would refrain from such accusations without first presenting proof. My lord, the difference is, in my statements can be found the truth. I was going to call Callum of the Neverwinter Nine, the commander you met in Old Owl Well after the victory there. His voice carries a great deal of weight. For our first witness, I summon Callum of Neverwinter Nine, fresh from his victory over the vicious orc tribes in Old Owl Well. Lord Callum, none can doubt your service and loyalty to Neverwinter, your successful defense of our sovereign lands. You have met the accused before, have you not? He was a great help to me in defeating the orc bands at Old Owl Well in earlier months. Were it not for his assistance, the well would now be held by the orcs. The soldiers of Neverwinter and the realm itself owe a deep debt of gratitude to him. And it is a travesty that these foul charges have been levied against him. Thank you, Lord Colum. We are ever grateful to hear the words of one of the nine. Lord Callum, I have heard you express that the charges in this court are a travesty and that they are unwarranted. That is true. I feel the charges are unfounded. Is it because they are given by Luskin? Luskin has much to gain by casting down heroes of Neverwinter. Do I trust that Luskin brings such charges in good faith? I do not. Nor do I trust your motives, Ambassador. There is a reason that low justice and high justice were divided by the Luskin Neverwinter Treaty, and I do not believe that any Luskin court or advocate has justice on their mind. But you do know that the voice of the accused's counsel is from Luskin, do you not? From the ranks of the Hostower of the Arcane, before he fled? That banshee! <laughs> No, I did not. I agree. This matter concerns Ember, and whether the accused, who has sacrificed for Neverwinter on many occasions, merits such accusations. The origin of such charges or slander on the counsel of the accused has no bearing on the crime itself. I misspoke, but your behavior here, Ambassador, only grants support to my words. If there's nothing else, I think we've all wasted enough time here. I thank Lord Callum for his time, Reverend Judge. My questions have been answered to my satisfaction. I see Naya, the herbalist we helped in port last. I was thinking about bringing her to the stand. She could be good for our defense. The accused calls Naya, resident of port last. Naya, you encountered the accused in port last, did you not? That's correct. I remember the accused well. And well met to you. It is good to see your face again. Could you tell us what happened? 
I have been at Port Last for the past season to help fortify the town's defense. Though my duties occupied all of my time, I was concerned about the unburied bodies in Ember. I knew from a former acquaintance, a follower of Kelimvor, that after dying such violent deaths, it was possible they could arise as undead. But I could not see to them and could not convince anyone to help until the good squire came. The squire agreed to put the dead to eternal rest. To hide the evidence, perhaps? This is meaningless. I think you have taken my words out of context. But I forgive you. After all, it is your life at stake. Now, are you done attempting to hold off a verdict? Or are you ready, at last, to face justice? No, at least one more witness, I think, and we shall close the curtain on this stage. Unknown to all, there was another survivor of the Ember Massacre. A poor, frightened boy who had to hide in a well to prevent being slaughtered. How did he know to do such a thing? Why, Marcus has a gift. A gift of sight beyond sight. The gift of a seer. And he knew the murder would happen to end the true identity of the killer. Tell us what you saw, young Marcus. What you saw with your special gift. It was a man that killed the village. He was big. Much bigger than a normal man. I don't know how you could be confused. Maybe he used a magic disguise. But disguises like that don't fool me. <laughs> what is this, a joke? You bring a child seer onto the stand, ask him a question, and then have him lie for you? Of course I do. If he has the power of a seer, then let us test it. Marcus, what do I hold in my left hand? Your left hand holds an iron ring. The ring of Garius, the master of the fifth tower. You hold it tightly as if afraid it will fly from you. Every time you touch the ring, you see how angry he becomes when one fails him, and you fear his ambition. It is a ring that is more of a chain than a piece of jewelry. And even more so, the ring reminds you of... Enough! No more questions. It is a ring, nothing more. But the boy guessed correctly. A parlor trick, surely. But the rest is lies, of that be assured. No more questions, Reverend Judge. Then I shall call our next witness. Chandra, please come forward. Sand, no! All right, you've got a good point. Go on, Sand. Ask your questions. Chandra? You know the accused. You have traveled with him, have you not? I have. And this crime of which he is accused? As one who knew the people of Ember, of Port Last, do you really think him capable of such a crime? No, not at all. Look, don't get me wrong. Trouble seems to come at his heels. But it's how he deals with those troubles that makes me say no. He... Well, he keeps trying to make things right, even when things are at their worst. And it's really hard not to admire that and stick by it, no matter what. I think that says it all, Chandra. Thank you. I have no more witnesses, Lord Nasher. The parties have spoken. Now all that remains is judgment to be passed. Lord Nasher. I expect Lord Nasher has already come to the correct decision. I certainly hope so. It's evident this was a conspiracy to frame a loyal squire of Neverwinter as a criminal of the worst sort. Silence, Sand. I have heard enough from you, and from you, Torio, and it is enough for me to reach a decision. The case before me was a difficult one, but it seems we now know the identity of Ember's attackers. Naval, I want the Ambassador, her retinue, and any remaining members of the Arcane Brotherhood of Luskan outside the city gates by nightfall. What? This is no verdict to think the Brotherhood truly responsible. You brought this case before me. Now you debate my verdict? I would be careful of where you point a sword when you draw it, Ambassador. And remind your masters and Luskin of that as well. I think we've wasted enough time on this. Justice has been done and- I claim the right of trial by combat. Ambassador, I am tired of your games and I will indulge you no longer.
In a matter of such importance, you would deny me my sacred right of appeal? Can Lord Nasher do that, Reverend Judge? Can he put himself above our god tier in this matter? He cannot. The ambassador from Luskin is entitled to an appeal as she describes. Gods, I was hoping she didn't know about it. And who will fight for you, Torio? This is no battle with words, though I would like to see you try to match your wit against the blade of a true soldier of Neverwinter. Indeed, you are correct, Sir Naval. Luskin is not the aggressor here, and I only wish to see justice done. But I cannot defend myself and seek justice in this matter. Is there not one who will champion the people of Ember? I will. I have listened to these lies, and will answer them with my blade, in Luskin's name. A champion has been declared. Both the defender and the accused are required by law to report to the Temple of Justice in Neverwinter, to undergo the rite of tear, to cleanse themselves in a night of prayer and vigilance. The following morning, the champion shall meet in combat so that justice may be decided. So be it. After the rite is observed, the trial shall be held in the morning upon the tourney grounds. Arm yourself and be ready, squire, or choose a champion to fight for you. Because, by the gods, we have not come all this way for justice to be denied in this final hour. So, it seems this will be decided with blood. If that is what it takes to win the day, then that is what we must do. When you are prepared, go to the Hall of Justice and speak with Prior Ham to start the Rite of Tear. Are you ready for the rite of tear? It is a cleansing ritual of prayer. It is held in seclusion here within the Hall of Justice. By purifying one's mind and reflecting on one's deeds, sometimes it allows one to achieve the clarity needed to avoid bloodshed in a trial by combat, by admitting one's guilt, although I do not believe that will happen this night. It is never winter law, and it must be upheld. You must complete the rite and prepare yourself for battle against your accuser in the morning. Your companions will have to leave you alone for the first phase of the rite. It is tradition. Follow me. Hold a moment! 
This rite of tear can wait. I haven't had my say yet. Why am I here? Well, it's because I want to take your place. That Torio, she's got you matched up with a Luskin train killer. There's no justice in that little viper suddenly bringing a bear out of nowhere to fight you. Let me fight him. He's a, a dog. Not even worthy of you. He fights like a Luskin fights, through daggers in the back, poison daggers even. I mean, you've shown me that you could win a battle through words, and it may have opened my eyes a little, just a little. But seems to me we've tried the wordplay, and now the real fight's here. Because it's not fair, that's why. I don't mind a fight for fight's sake, but this crime they've accused you of, the slaughter of an entire village, it's more than just a fight, it's... You feel it is unjust. You're damn right it's unjust. This isn't just a fight by the gods, this is honor and fairness and the lives of you and those people of Ember who were slaughtered. After all you went through, all the searching for clues and those poor villagers to lay it all on your head, by the gods, I want to fight him. I'll show him justice. You are allowed to choose a champion. Do you wish this one to take your place? You must still undergo the rite of tear. But when Lorne emerges on the field tomorrow, it shall be this one who fights in your stead. All right, but look, that Lorne fellow, he carries himself like a warrior. He's dangerous, so just be careful. I will see your friend out. Then return. May Tyr's justice fall upon us all. Here you will remain until we come for you in the morning. Gaze upon the face of Tyr and let him gaze upon you. If you are true to your word and deeds, then you need not fear his judgment. You are permitted visitors during this time. For often, justice does not solely lie in the words and deeds of the accused, and you may gain truth from the words of those closest to you. We will return for you on the morrow. So... Quiet enough for you? I mean, now that Kelgar is done ranting, I heard it from several streets away. Actually helped me find this place. I hope you don't mind if I come in here and just start speaking my mind. Otherwise, this place would seem awfully dull. I must say... I didn't expect that we would be able to force Torio's hand like this. Trial by combat is a rather desperate maneuver, quite unlike her. It's really rather quite pleasing. And if you were to beat Lorne, well, that would make me simply ecstatic. I could help, you know. Here, take this. It's a few special concoctions I whipped up to help you tomorrow should Lorne decide to poison, cheat, or simply give you several gaping chest wounds. And, uh, no need for thanks. It would just be embarrassing. Let me leave you to it. But, there is one last thing. Our friend Torio. I think she's rather close to breaking. It's what happens when one is tied to an ill-conceived plan as I once felt, and I think Torio is one who prefers to be on the winning side. Worth thinking about, especially if she is at our mercy later. Good night. Just thought I'd swing by, though I didn't want you to get ambushed in the middle of the night. Chandra mentioned what happened last time, so I thought I'd check out the meditation chamber. Big statue, by the way, but don't look for the donation box. There isn't any. <laughs> and, you know, make sure everything was safe. Well, thanks. I'd really like to, but this place is making me itch, like being around Casavir too long. But, uh, I did want to say something. <laughs> you know, uh... 
good luck tomorrow, and all that. And, uh, you know, I, I could make justice happen a little easier if you wanted. Well, a little corrosive acid, <laughs> courtesy of Sans shop, don't tell him. And Lord's falchion won't be as sharp as it normally is, nor will his armor be as strong. It happens, things weaken over time, entropy or something, <laughs> blameless. All right, I mean, I only had to steal the acid out of Sans shop and avoid his wards. But if you don't need it, you don't need it, or me. Oops, time to go. If they ask you about the donation box, tell them it was missing when you got here, all right? It is time. Torio and Lorne await us on the field. Nasher wished me to communicate to you the importance of the coming battle, both for you and for Neverwinter itself. This is a great honor to be able to lay down your life for your homeland. You should savor this moment. For too long has Luskin's arcane brotherhood had free passage in Neverwinter. This trial is a means by which their presence here can be removed. What happened at Ember was a terrible crime, and they are responsible of that we are certain. Fight Lorne, defeat him, and you will prevent Neverwinter from sharing Ember's fate at Luskin hands. Succeed in this, and Nasher has promised to grant you your own land. And a noble title, if you so wish it. These are dark times, and he needs every loyal hand by his side should more troubles fall upon us. Very well. I can ask for no more. The turning grounds await. You know, at times like this, I feel like your squire. I feel rather like a gnome, which is good, because I am one. My, look at all those people. What I wouldn't give for an audience such as that. Well, on a less bloody occasion, perhaps. You sure about this? It's not too late to choose someone else to fight for you. Not like I don't have faith in you or anything. Chandra, you changed your mind? I'm glad. After all that terrible crying last night and that phrase you kept saying, what was it? I don't see how he can possibly... Grabnar. Sorry. Tactless. Again. Sorry. Did I say that? I want him to answer for what he did, I do. But that man is built like a mountain, and if he wins, well, he's out of our reach. Gods, you're frustrating. Fine. Go on and see if you can move all of Run while you're at it. Hmm... <laughs> I wish I could think of a song, but words fail me. Is the accuser or her champion here? We are here. Is the accused or his champion here? What takes place in the field here today shall resolve the crime of the raising of the village of Ember and the death of its people. Torio Claven, ambassador of Luskin, has accused one in the service of Neverwinter and has called for a trial by combat to resolve the matter. Acting on her behalf is her champion, Lorne, who will fight in her stead. Shut up! Just for that, I'm going to carve my name into your hide while you still breathe. We call upon Tyr to help us settle this matter. Tyr's judgment shall come forth through blade and strength, through balance, and resolve.
You've won nothing. Garius lives. He seeks your death, and you will not be able to stop him. So go on. Kill me. If you have the courage. The people of Ember didn't fight back and I took pleasure in killing every one of them. Even in defeating me here, you have achieved no victory. The people of Ember are still dead. Justice has been served, my judgment. Past at the trial shall now take effect as was intended. The Arcane Brotherhood of Luskan is to leave the city of Neverwinter within three days' time, and they are not to be permitted within our walls again by royal decree. The possessions of the champion of the Luskan Ambassador, Lorne, are to become the property of the accused. And Ambassador, you now have much to answer for. To the accused. I believe you are in need of a well-deserved rest. Please return to the Sunken Flagon. That is a command from your lord, soldier of Neverwinter. Word of the trial came to me faster than you did. It would have been wiser for you not to come at all. Forgive us, Master Garius. He proved more capable than we had expected. In an open field, without the mockery of this trial, I would have run him through. His head would lie on a pike outside this keep for all to see. Indeed. I think it is you who does not see, Lorn. <laughs> Ember destroyed, the time wasted with this trial. I trusted you, Torio. Brutes like Lorn, they swarm the Luskan streets in hundreds, thousands, but you... M Master, Garius, the one we seek, he still has the shards. They are in his possession. They can still be retrieved. Tell me what to do. I shall do it. Do? You are to do nothing, and you are to say nothing, especially to our ally. The shards are out of my reach for now, but I have almost all I need for the ritual. And when that is done, I shall need our ally no longer. I shall not need anyone. Leave me, Torio. At once, Master Garius. <laughs> <laughs> 